Eating disorders affect at least 30 million of people of all ages and genders only in the United States. Every 62 minutes, at least one person dies as a direct result from an eating disorder, and it has the highest mortality rate of any mental illness. Hello friends, I'm Dr. Raminder. Warm welcome to my channel. Today I'll be listing out five different types of eating disorder. Keep watching. Number 1. Anorexia Nervosa It is an eating disorder characterized by the following prominent clinical features. It occurs much more often in the females as compared to the males. The common age of one child is adolescence 13 to 19 years of age. There is an intense fear of becoming obese. This fear does not decrease even if the body becomes very thin and underweight. There is often a body image disturbance. The person is unable to perceive one body size accurately. However, body image disturbance may sometimes not be seen in patients from non-Western cultural settings. There is also a refusal to maintain the body weight, above a minimal, normal weight for that age, sex, and height. There is also significant weight loss, usually more than 25% of the original weight. The final weight is usually 15% less than the minimum limit of the normal weight, or body mass index of 7.5 or less. There is no non-medical illness which account for the weight loss. Amenorrhea is primary or secondary, and there is absence of any other primary psychiatric disorder. In addition to these difficult clinical features, other associated features are often present. The patient imposes dietary restrictions on self, can have peculiar patterns of handling food, such as breaking food into small bits, hiding food, and can engage in vigorous exercises. Anorexia is actually a misnomer, as there is never really a decrease in the appetite. Instead, in fact, patient is often preoccupied with the food. In severe cases, fine landing hair may develop all over the body in the patient. And a woman with anorexia nervosa can present with a poor sexual adjustment, with conflicts about being a woman and fear of pregnancy. A large number, up to 50% of the patients with anorexia nervosa also have bulimic episodes. These are characterized by rapid consumption of the large amount of food in a relatively short period of time occurring usually right alone. This is known as the binge eating or eating binges. And these are followed by intense guilt and attempts to remove eaten food. If untreated, the weight loss can be marked and death may occur from hyperkalemia caused by the self-induced vomiting, dehydration, malnutrition, or congestive cardiac failure which is caused by the anemia. Hence, the treatment of the anorexia nervosa is important and it can be considered into phases which often merge into each other. Short-term treatment which encourages the weight gain and correct nutritional deficiencies if any and long-term treatment which is aimed at maintaining the near normal weight achieved in short-term treatment. Other treatment modalities are behavioral therapy, individual psychotherapy, hospitalization and drug therapy. Drug therapy consists of the antipsychotic drugs like the chlorpromazine and antidepressants like the fluxetine or chlorpromazine. Number 2. Bulimia nervosa It is an eating disorder characterized by the following clinical features. It usually has an onset in early teens or adolescents. There is an intense fear of becoming obese. There may be an early history of anorexia nervosa. There is usually a body image disturbance and the person is unable to perceive own body size accurately. There is a persistent preoccupation with eating and irresistible craving for food. There are episodes of overeating in which large amounts of foods are consumed within short periods of time known as eating binges. There are attempts to counteract the effects of overeating by one or more of the following, such as self-induced vomiting, purgative abuse, periods of starvation and or use of the drugs such as appetite suppressants. There is no non-medical illness in the present and there is absence of any other primary psychiatric disorder. Hence, the treatment is required and it can be delivered in the following methods such as the behavioral therapy, individual psychotherapy, group therapy, family therapy or the antidepressant drugs like the fluxetin, which is known as the selective serotonin reactive inhibitors. Number 3. Obesity Overeating associated with other psychological disturbances. Obesity caused by a reaction to distressing event is included here. Obesity caused by drugs or endocrine factors or due to constitutional factors is not considered a psychiatric disorder. Treatment options depend on the underlying cause, for example, psychotherapy, antidepressant for depression, advice from dietitian, drug treatment, or even bariatric surgery. Number 4. Binge Eating Disorder 
In binge eating disorder, large amount of foods are consumed in a relatively short period, followed by severe discomfort and feelings of self denigration. There is a sense of lack of control over eating during the episodes. Additionally, there is also eating of large amount of food throughout the day with no planned meal times, eating alone because of being embarrassed and of feeling guilty and depressed after overeating, as the treatment is vital and it's the treatment of the cause. It is similar to the bulimia nervosa, although the role of the drug treatment in binge eating disorder is not so clear. Last but not the least, psychogenic vomiting. It is a clinical syndrome in which biopsychosocial factors interact to produce symptoms which are often mistaken for upper gastrointestinal tract diseases or other conditions. The characteristic clinical features include that repeated vomiting which typically occurs soon after a meal has begun or just after it has been completed. Vomiting often occurs in a complete absence of nausea or raging. Vomiting is often self-induced and can be suppressed if necessary. Despite repeated vomiting, weight loss is not usually significant and the course of illness is usually chronic with frequent remissions and relapses. Hence, the treatment is vital. The first and the most important step is correct diagnosis and exclusion of other physical and or psychiatric causes. Other modalities are psychotherapy, identification of psychosocial stressor, and environmental manipulation. If you have any comments or queries, please write to me below. I'll be more than happy to answer. And if you like this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more exciting videos. Thank you.